In this video, we'll be replacing the inner tie rod end on this 2007 Mazda CX-9. It's going to be the same process for the driver and passenger side. It's going to be a 21 millimeter. We'll go ahead and take off our lug nuts now. Now, if you want to, on either side, driver or passenger, when you're doing your tie rod end, if you want to turn your wheel, it'll give you a little bit more access to work in that area. So now what we're gonna do is find our outer tie rod end ball joint here. We're gonna remove our castle nut, but to do that, we need to remove this cotter pin. So you should replace this cotter pin when you remove it, because removing it will mean you'll have to bend it. So it's the part you should replace every time you remove it and your new tie rod end will come with a new cotter pin. Just go ahead and pull that straight out. Now our castle nut is gonna be an 18 millimeter. All right, so there's our castle nut. Now we're replacing our tie rod end. So we can hammer down here to separate our tie rod end. If we weren't replacing our outer, and we were replacing only our inner, you'd wanna be very careful about how you separate your tie rod end from your knuckle. You don't wanna do any damage if you're not replacing. Sometimes what you can do is flip your castle nut around and actually hammer down on the bottom of the castle nut, or you can come in here and just hit the knuckle portion to separate the two. So now because we're replacing our tie rod end, we can go ahead and hammer down on our threaded portion here. So we're gonna do that with a five pound sledge. And there you go. So now to remove your tie rod end, what we're gonna do is lock up our inner tie rod end with a 13 millimeter here. You'll see that there's a flat spot on both your inner and your outer. So we'll put a 13 millimeter there and a 22 millimeter back here. Now what we're looking to do is stop our inner from spinning while loosening our outer. Now once you have it loose, what you want to do is unscrew your outer while counting your full rotations outward. Just go ahead and count your rotations all the way out. We have 20 and a half. So now in our inner tie rod, we're gonna use a 13 millimeter wrench. And we're gonna use our lower control arm to stop that from spinning. While we loosen up our jam nut, we're gonna use an impact and a deep 21 millimeter socket. So now we're going to remove this clip here holding on the end of our boot. Just going to use a long pair of bent needle nose. Squeeze that clip. And we can slide that clip right off. So now we're going to remove this boot here. But sometimes you need to get in here with a small pick or a small flathead screwdriver and just break this seal. You see we have a little bit of liquid here. So now at the back of our boot, typically you'll have some kind of either zip tie or cable holding that boot in place. And you can see we have a bundle of twisted wires back here. We'll end up replacing that with either a small band clamp or a zip tie. So we went ahead and just wiggled it back and forth. Now on the back side, what was left over was this was actually wrapped around the back of the boot. So now that we have our rear band removed and our front band removed, we can go ahead and pull our boot forward. Now you'll remember that there's a little notch here that this sits in up front, so you're going to have to pull it past that. And then you can take your boot right off. In the back, this is where that band rode all the way around here. 
This is where we're going to put our zip tie when we're done. So now to remove your inner tie rod end, you'll notice that the center will spin freely without spinning this part here. This part is the part we need to spin to remove your inner tie rod end. To do that, we have an inner tie rod end removal or install tool. Simply going to slide it over the tie rod and we're going to tighten it down evenly. All right, now you want to position yourself so when we go to remove this or loosen this up, we have enough swing. So now we're going to tighten down our two nuts here. It's going to be 17 millimeters on this specific tool. Your tool might be different. Once we have those tight, we'll come back, loosen it up. All right, so now with the ratchet and a few extensions, you don't need the extensions, just trying to get a good shot here, get out of the way, I'm going to loosen up the inner tie rod. All right, once you have your tie rod loose enough where it starts spinning, let's go ahead and break one of these nuts free. Take the tool off and see if we can spin this out. Now sometimes, at this point it's loose, but it's a little slippery. Come in with a pair of adjustable pliers. And go ahead and spin the inner tie rod right out. And we have our new inner tie rod. We can line that up and start threading it in. Now what we're going to do is thread this in as tight as we can get it by hand. Once we get it nice and tight and aligned, we're going to have to pin our clip over onto the flat spots of our tie rod end. And what that'll do is stop this from actually loosening up. So now at this point, we can put our tool on. Now remember, we're going to set up our tool so we have enough movement to tighten down our inner tie rod. And we'll come back with our 17 millimeter for this tool specifically and tighten them down. So I set myself up where I can't get to this nut here, so we'll just go ahead and tighten this one down. Now that we have our tool set up, we can go ahead and tighten it down. So we're just going to see if we can get a little bit of rotation on it and then readjust our tool. What we're looking for here is to turn it enough that we can get the tabs in the back lined up with a flat spot. Once we're tightened down, we can go ahead and remove our tool. Alright, so now that we have our inner tie rod lined up with the flat spot here to our ears or our tabs, we're going to paint in or fold in our tabs. What that's going to do is stop the portion that we just tightened down from loosening up. Alright, so now that we have both ears or both tabs peened over, peened down, we should stop the inner tie rod from loosening up and spinning off. So now we can go ahead and put the tie rod itself, the arm, in the center. We can put our lock nut on and we can start to put our outer tie rod on. Before we do that, we're going to put the boot on. So now our boot right here is where the cables were, or the cable tie was originally. We're going to replace that with a zip tie. We're going to make sure we're in that groove. What we're going to do is just get this just tight enough where it doesn't want to pop off, but no tighter. We're not trying to close this gap at all right now. We want to leave the tail end on here, and we're going to go ahead and put it into place. Now you will potentially need to remove or move this so that the tail of the zip tie isn't in your way when you go ahead and push this in place. But you also want to leave that tail end on there to grab so you can tighten it down 
once it's in place. All right, so what we're looking for up front here is this little section to go back into this notch here. All right, well, we're going to push it all the way back to start so that we can get the back portion of this boot in place. We're going to do that first. We'll tighten up that zip tie and then we'll pull it forward. So once you've got your boot in place and your zip tie in place, what we actually did is aligned our zip tie this way. So we were pulling this way or pulling upwards, but from this side. We went in just behind the control arm and the subframe. There's a little spot back there we can reach a pair of needle nose pliers in and pull that zip tie tight. Now the tail that's left over there, if you can get a tool in there to cut that, great. If not, no big deal as long as it's not in the way. Now once we have our boot all set in the back, we're going to pull our front of our boot forward into this groove right here. Now we're going to take our hose clamp or our clamp for our boot and go ahead and lock down the front of our boot into that area, into that groove. I'm just going to spin that clamp right there. Now your inner tie rod will come with the new lock nut. We're going to take that lock nut, we're going to thread it all the way on. So now our lock nut is all the way to the back or all the way on, which will now allow us to take our outer tie rod and spin it on the amount of turns that we counted when we took it off. So now we have our new outer tie rod in. We're going to angle the inner outwards just slightly so that we can take our outer and start to rotate it on. We're looking for a half turn here to catch. Whatever number you counted when you removed it, you want to reinstall the new one that number of turns in. All right, so there's our 20 turns plus the half we started with. Now from here, what we're going to do is take our lock nut and tighten that down till it meets up with our outer tie rod end. Now this is stopping us from spinning our tie rod end in any further. Now from here we can take our ball joint end of our tie rod and put it back into our knuckle. Now ideally what you want is your ball joint end here to be in the center of its travel. You don't want it too far in any direction. For this, we're going to need to just adjust it slightly. And we can push straight up. Now from here, we're going to put our castle nut on. We'll get the castle nut finger tight. Now that we have our outer tie rod end into the knuckle, we're going to go ahead and tighten down our castle nut. It's going to be 50 foot-pounds. Okay, what we're looking for is the hole to line up with one of the notches in the castle nut. So we're just going to continue a little bit more. There we go. Now we can go ahead and push our new cotter pin through. We're actually going to push it through from the back and bend it over. Now moving up our outer tie rod end, we have our jam nut that we're going to have to tighten up. So the jam nut itself is going to be a 21 millimeter. And the tie rod end, you'll see a couple of flat spots here, are going to be a 22 millimeter. So we'll hold our tie rod end nice and parallel to the knuckle and we'll tighten down our jam nut. Go ahead and put our wheel back on. And what I'll do here is I'll put a top and a bottom lug nut on and I'll rock the rim back and forth onto that rotor face, try and get it as flush as possible on the back. And then I'll continue with the rest of the lug nuts. Once we have our lug nuts in, we'll come in and snug these down. 
We'll lower the vehicle on the ground so the wheel won't spin and we'll torque them down. So now with the vehicle on the ground, we're gonna go ahead and torque down our lug nuts. We're gonna do that in a crisscross pattern. We're gonna to torque it down to 85 foot pounds. After finishing this installation, it's important to have an alignment done on your vehicle. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.